everyone from a sticky thread atop the fish.net forum. I'm honored to be here in the hall of Jazz Fest posters at the old home place in Mississippi to be tonight's guest host and sole judge for the second week of Lemuria's hashtag home tasking series. Indeed, I was asked last minute to stand in for a much crustier jaded vet so hopefully my orange socks can fill his shoes. In a considerable increase over the first week, we have 13 entries total this round. Not only did the number of videos increase, but so did the overall quality of the work. This bodes well for later editions of the challenges, so everyone should obviously stay tuned and get ready to submit your own creative response to next week's challenge. Of course, I would be remiss not to mention how deeply appreciated your contributions to the Mockingbird Foundation remain, especially during these uncertain times that may likely include significant budget shortfalls for schools and music educational programs across the country as we continue to respond to the many challenges the novel coronavirus represents. So, on to this week's participants. Let's review them in sequential order from the first submission. In less than 30 minutes after Lemuria posted the challenge, the first entry was made with speed comparable to a Chump Rock second post. Wait, it, it was Chump Rock. Anyway, here we have an awesome transformational process with a very solid similarity to the photo of Mike. But it could have used a little additional graphics work to really sell it. I admit I am looking for the album art to be complete in this competition. Maybe after a little more time, and we have a solid contender right here, except there's no music either. And I admit, it's kind of creepy looking at this without musical accompaniment. Coming in just 30 minutes after the first entry, also reflecting his own competitive reply speed, Lizard with Disease could have benefited from waiting a while after a little more proof of concept. At least wait until dark. It needs a little more of that outhouse vibe, which Knight would have helped. This one is a little easier since it didn't include text on the original album cover, but their rapid response negatively affected the planning here a little too acutely, including that it was submitted without a soundtrack. Our third entry comes from one of .NET's absolute nicest gentlemen, Grateful67's interpretation of a picture of Nectar well, for a first entry in this very competitive home tasking event, it was acceptable. I'd say this would have been great footage to use for brainstorming. There's like three days for folks to submit, right? Y'all should feel free to take a little more time to really pull these together, because there's some stiff competition ahead. That's exactly right. This is what we needed, a little higher production value. Not only do we have a soundtrack, but there is album text as well. It's even a solid font match. But if you thought Bell would hurt his car when he wouldn't even really slice his nipple, you're sorely mistaken. Nonetheless, significant details are embedded in this one. Even if, like Farmhouse, it would have been a little stronger shot at night. In our first version of the Slip, Stitch, and Pass cover, Bola here challenges the concept of the competition with a video in the short MP4 loop format. Nevertheless, this one is a very creative miniature animated take on the album cover. This could have used a little wider angle to capture the C to really give the impression of the record and to top it off maybe with the band's name down in the corner would have been big, but this one is nevertheless somehow very endearing. Maybe it's the Lego character or the real ball of yarn. And everybody remember, FYI, you can embed sound into those MP4 loops. In the first of three versions of Hoist, all entered, strangely enough, one right behind the other, Mick H2WG's features a cat. And I didn't see where this was a Humane Society approved stunt. The stakes are high, and we need to be sure to cross the T's and dot the I's. Nevertheless, the use of text at the end and the music helps this one cause, but that's not the studio version of Julius. Next up, the winner from last week delivers again. Bozak Axel with his selection of 
Riker's mailbox gives this one an eerie industrial vibe that serves to feel like it may be from a shipyard where the plush horse is being loaded for travel or worse yet, a dimension veterinarian's operating room. The final take on hoist in this week's challenge comes from Rebar. And while this, this one's background feels a little more similar to the album cover with its really strong red ebullience, this horse never gets stationary and actually gets hoisted right out of the top of the frame. The album version of Julius sounds much more appropriate though. Home tasking is all about bringing the family together. And for the second week in a row, this Dot Nutter's cute Hello My Baby has brought it to the competition. Even though it's unlikely she'll be running away from anything anytime soon, the writing in the sand, framing of the ocean, cut from the album, and scale of the ball of almost yarn make for a significant level of anti-upping from one of last week's runners up. Despite using his first post to wisely vote Ruby Waves in this year's Jam of the Year final, the Trace Super Bowl welcome is certainly well earned for this .NET lurker's second post for sure. All around extremely quality of submission, and dare I say, if it had had the text graphics, we would have had the first masterpiece on our hands. Even though Fishy Boy left extra credit on the table by not smearing some green paint all over himself, but this is a really powerful entry this week. Again, taking a relatively low-tech route, Cuddly and Muscular does at least earn an official spot in the discussion since Zizek overlooked his entry last week. This one you could have used audio to really make the case. Nevertheless, it does a good job to convey its intent. And what is surely one of the loftiest attempts in this round of hashtag home tasking here at fish.net, Captain Bill's interpretation of the rip artwork is actually a little harder to decipher than the original and I would have gone ahead and spray painted the bear blue too. Last but not least again with a buzzer beater just like last week's philosophical entry which was a personal favorite but a bit of a dark horse this week's entry from M Show 96 is right in the sweet spot with a clip appropriate as the soundtrack for the forest of tiny trees at the beginning when the homage to large fist sculpture comes into the frame and the text fades in, the effort really bears fruit. You know, and I never realized before today the importance of night on Fish's album covers. Whoa, you're still here? Well, with the recap out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about the top five. But before we do, I gotta make sure everyone knows, narrowing down these winners from the 13 was a serious challenge, and I had to leave some genuine winners behind. But for fifth place, we have last week's winner, Bozak Axel's Take on Hoist. Ahead of him in fourth place, Van Hammersley's family-friendly version of Slip Stitch and Pacifier is another notch in that gal's cap. While technically superior, Dale Cooper's transformation of a desert roadside into the cover of the Sicket disc takes the three spot just a shadow behind M Show 96's first runner-up dedication to Round Room. Meanwhile, this week's winner, a hole-in-one representation from Fishy Boy, really helps the rest of this week's great contribution set the bar high for upcoming rounds, the next of which will be unveiled this Friday. In the meantime, I recommend everyone read the book to get ready, and of course, Let's all enjoy tonight's dinner and a movie. I'm Arm Socks, and I'm happy to have been the host for the second week of Lemuria's Fish.net hashtag home tasking challenge.